In terms of vaccination, I think one of the challenges we have, and we have a fairly uh, uh, a law that protects parents' right to vaccinate their children in this state. I think the challenges that we are seeing is that we have a number of uh, communicable diseases that are impacting our communities around the United States because parents haven't been vaccinating. So I would say uh, we probably give uh, some parents a little too much leeway. If we want to make sure that we're protecting public health, we, make, we want to make sure that our uh, children have the vaccinations that they need. Representative. Yeah. Uh, as a physician, I certainly uh, believe in the benefits of, of vaccination, but I also think that, that parents should have the right to opt out, to opt out for personal beliefs, uh, religious beliefs, or, or even if they have uh, strong alternative medical uh, beliefs, and, and that has been uh, beneficial. I think that gives people option and, and choice, and that's the policy I would continue to pursue as, as Oregon's governor. Representative Bueller, I wanted to dive a little bit more into the state's pension crisis that you've touched on. Oregon has a $22 billion uh, public pension shortfall right now, yet the government is still covering 100% of uh, the pension, uh, the payments into the pension fund. So should public employees be required to contribute to the pension fund? Yeah. Look, this, this issue with regards to our troubled pension plan uh, is an issue of vital concern. It, it, uh, it should be an issue of vital concern to hardworking uh, public employees. They should want me to be Oregon's next governor to address this problem. My concern for them, uh, if we don't fix it, uh, the pension they're expecting could be worth pennies on the dollar. And it's certainly an issue of vital concern to the the kids I saw in Reynolds School District, 32 fourth graders per teacher. What I'll do is elevate this issue to the top of the political agenda by not signing a single new spending bill until I have a PERS reform bill on my desk. And some of the factors, some of the tenets of that bill I'd like to see is yes, public employees contributing to their own pension plan. I'd also stop the, the big monthly payouts, the $50,000 a month payouts that, that some people have got. I'd limit that at $100,000 a year final average salary calculation. And importantly, going forward, everyone in PERS has transitioned away from the troubled retirement plan into a typical 401k plan. That will put Governor, the state back you, on stable footing. Thank you. Uh, under my leadership, uh, we negotiated that all 98% of state public employees are picking up their 6%. So that's happening at the state level. I believe that public employees need to have some skin in the game and will continue to work toward that end. In 2003, the legislature made substantial changes to PERS. They stopped the Bellotti payments for Tier 3. And as a result, uh, the average state public employee makes roughly $2,300 a month on retirement. That's less than $30,000 a year. I think it's easy for a millionaire to say he's going to cut the retirements of hardworking Oregonians. I'm not willing to do that. We have firefighters who put their lives on the line this summer. They saved over 7,000 homes from burning up. I am not willing to cut their retirements. Um, can, can may I, I follow yes, up, can please? I, can Governor, I, um, I'm wondering if you can answer, though, you referred to the 401k style plan that public employees are contributing to now, and they also got raises as part of that, but should they start contributing to the actual pension fund? Certainly, I think that public employees ought to have skin in the game. As I said, under my administration, 98% uh, of state public employees are picking up their 6%. I think we can do more. But here's the reality. These folks, our nurses, our teachers, our firefighters, our law enforcement, they put their lives on the line. They dedicate the best years of their, their lives to serving our children. I believe they deserve a safe, a secure, and affordable retirement. Representative Bueller, we'd like to give you a little more time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I'm disappointed that uh, Governor Brown would resort to a personal attack on this issue. This is about policy. This is an issue of vital concern to the state. Look, we all want uh, loyal public employees to have a secure and, and safe retirement fund. But we also have a, a problem in the state. 
a problem where we have a classroom funding crisis because despite record state school budgets, those dollars aren't getting into the classroom. And Governor Brown's uh, uh, supposed measures to improve this situation is, is really political theater. As, as you mentioned, uh, she takes away the 6% pickup but gives a 7% raise, 7% raise to some of her biggest financial contributors. That's not leadership, that's pandering, and that's avo avoiding one of the biggest problems facing Oregon for the next decade. Representative Bueller, the Metro Planning Agency has put a more than $650 million housing bond on the November ballot to help pay for much needed affordable housing in the Tri-County area. You've come out against that housing bond. As governor, how would you tackle the affordable housing problem? And if not with housing bond money, how would you pay for it? Yeah, uh, affordable housing has uh, reached almost crisis uh, situation, not only in the Portland metro area, but all across the, the state of Oregon. Uh, I am against the, the metro funded uh, bond. I do not think we need to expand the role of Metro in this, and certainly I do not think we should build a whole lot more public housing, uh, but we need to address this situation right away. I think a better solution is provide rental assistance, keep people in place where they are, are right now, and I proposed a fund of $50 million, but that alone is not going to be enough. We also need to create 20,000 affordable and workforce housing units every year. We need to treat this like the, the emergency it is. And importantly, why we're doing both of those things, we need to work diligently to decrease the cost of actually building houses in, in Oregon. Under Governor Brown's administration, we've driven up the cost of housing with increasing regulations, zoning requirements. Uh, uh, that's not smart management. We need to decrease the cost of housing so everyone can afford to, to live comfortably in Oregon. Governor, go ahead. With my experience as a family law and domestic violence advocate, I know how critically important it is for every person to have a safe, dry, warm, affordable place to call home. I rolled up my sleeves the moment I became governor and we worked on building more affordable units because the best thing we can do is build places for people to live. In my first year, we uh, built 3,500, second year, 4,000. And this year, I'm proud to say we have about 7,800 under development. But that's not all. We gave our local communities more tools, speeding up permitting, and making sure that we can uh, build granny flats. There was a really important bill uh, that required uh, developers to include uh, affordable units in their developments. My opponent voted against it. He also voted against legislation that would you, uh, kick people can, out of their homes. Can I, re you. Can I rebu rebut that? I mean, those, those are outlandish claims. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the governor talks a lot about uh, programs and percentages, but let's look at the, the results. The results show that homelessness has grown much worse under Governor Brown. We have the number one, the number one state in the nation for the number of homeless youth. So we can talk about programs, we can talk about dollars that, that Governor Brown has devoted to this problem, but the results speak for themselves. I have a vision that will turn this around and end homelessness in Oregon over the next Thank five you. years. Governor Representative Bueller, you've made leadership an issue in the campaign, and I'm searching for some on climate change. You're anti-coal but pro-fracking. You've dismissed a carbon tax as an attempt to generate a $1.4 billion slush fund for green energy profiteers. When the threat of climate change has never been more urgent, why the milk toast argument that Oregon has done or paid enough to address the problem? Yeah. Uh, well, Steve, I reject a, a lot of the premises of your question, as you can imagine. Uh, I certainly believe in, in climate change, and that's why as one of the few Republicans to, to vote to transition Oregon away from coal-based electricity to renewable in, energy sources. It's why I've spoken out frequently against the Trump's administration uh, policies, uh, specifically with regards to withdrawing the United States from the climate uh, accords. Uh, I'm against uh, Governor Brown's cap-and-trade. Uh, uh, plan or uh, probably a better description of it is a 1.4 billion dollar sales tax on on energy and I'm against that because it's going to hit hard-working Oregonians Oregonians who are struggling to pay the bills right now 
with a sales tax that they can't afford. And importantly, those dollars won't go to schools, they won't go to providing health care, they're going to go to a complex tax credit scheme for green energy companies. And look, we've already had problems with that in the past, something called the business energy tax credit scheme where hundreds of millions of dollars were misallocated to the extent that people have gone to jail for corruption. I don't want to repeat that again. Governor Brown. Well, the League of uh, Oregon Conservation Voters agrees with you. Uh, my mm -hmm. opponent has a lifetime ranking of an F uh, based on his three years voting record in the Oregon legislature. I've continued to make steady incremental progress on tackling global climate change from reducing the carbon intensity of our fuels, uh, from transitioning off of coal, from investing in EV uh, rebates and public transit, which my vo opponent voted against. And we worked hard last session to reduce carbon emissions. We weren't able to uh, successfully complete the legislation, but we are working collaboratively with utilities, with the business community, and with the ag sector to make sure that we reduce carbon emissions in such a way that it doesn't exacerbate already existing economic disparities in our low-income communities Thank and you. our rural communities. So Representative Bueller, um, after years of planning and $200 million that was spent by the state of Oregon, the Columbia River crossing was scrapped five years ago. Uh, but in the last month, there has been renewed interest from several politicians to revive that I-5 bridge project. Do you think the state should re-engage and invest billions in new money in a bridge between Vancouver and Portland. Yeah. Certainly there has been underinvestment in Oregon's transportation infrastructure for decades. Our, our bridges, our, our roads, our, our ports. Uh, and unfortunately, the Columbia River Crossing uh, project spent nearly $300 million in a, and not a single shovel of dirt was, was turned. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Governor Brown, when she was Secretary of State, didn't even look into that situation. It was her duty as head of audits. Uh, but we do need to invest more in our infrastructure. I voted against the, the transportation package uh, this last legislative session or the 2017 uh, session uh, because I didn't think it had enough investment for these types of important projects, especially for the Portland metro area. And I knew also that Governor Brown's policy was to, to bake into that legislation tolling tolling, importantly, not to build new bridges, like I think we should build a, a new bridge across the Columbia, but tolling to change people's behavior, to get them out of their, their vehicles and not to add capacity. Um, I'm against tolling for that purpose. Governor, go ahead. Yes, I, I think um, that before we move forward on the Columbia River crossing, I wanna see Washington meeting two criteria, that they are really serious about fixing the bridge and investing in that uh, bridge. And secondly, uh, that uh, it includes public transit, particularly light rail. Um, I think it's critically important that we make the seismic retrofitting needed on our bridges uh, because I saw what happened uh, in Minneapolis when the 35W bridge uh, went down. People were killed. Uh, none of my family was injured, fortunately. But as governor, I think it is my responsibility to make sure Oregonians are safe. My opponent voted against this transportation package, a bipartisan package, to invest in seismic re resilience in our roads and bridges. I don't know what he'd use to fix the Columbia River crossing since he's taking you, a no governor. new taxes pledge. Scotch tape? 